thought for the day. What you do makes a difference, and you get to decide the kind of difference you want to make. Welcome to 7 Minutes for Yourself. I'm Christina Ina, and I'm so glad you've joined me for what I believe will be 7 of the most enriching minutes of your day. Let's take this time to reconnect with ourselves and improve our well-being. In today's episode of 7 Minutes for Yourself, we are discussing the tools needed to become the best versions of ourselves. Have a listen. Human beings can alter the course of their life. Human beings can live one way for five years, tear up that script, live a totally different way the next five years. The first six years of my economic life, I wound up broke. Second six years, I wound up rich. Someone says, don't you have to do the second six years like you did the first six years and jot this down. No. No, you don't have to live the second six years like the first six. You can use all the information and all the advice and repairing all of your mistakes and adopting a new and refined philosophy so that the next six years can be totally different than the last six. All of these major questions, what about my life and my value and my place and my future? And what about life? What about origin? What about destiny? What about opportunity? What about possibility? All of these major questions, to let them go casually by is to miss the treasures that your life could accumulate into in the coming months, the coming years. So this is called major. What we ponder and what we think about sets the course of our life. It's like the set of the sail that's taking us somewhere. Self-confidence comes from the lack of neglect. If you will not neglect to do the small daily discipline, that's where self-confidence comes from. Part of good health is self-confidence. I know I'm going to be healthy. I eat the apple a day. I walk around the block. I do the jogging on the beach. At the end of the day, when you've really poured it on and you've done all the stuff, Self-confidence grows. That self-confidence affects your health, it affects your future, it affects your psyche. Self-confidence means willingness to do whatever it takes to achieve. Whenever you prepare correctly, taking all of the steps you're supposed to take, doing everything in your power to stay on track, whenever your preparations lead to success, achieving your goals, you reinforce the disciplines that got you there. Success leads to reinforcement of the proper discipline. If what you're doing is working, keep doing it. If what you're doing isn't working, change it. If I grow, think of what that will do for my future. Self-development earns success. Self-investment earns respect. And the only way to make a better and better and better investment in your future is to become better and stronger and wiser and more competent. And the more attractive you become, the more attractive you are. And the more attractive you are, the more you attract success. Self-development, self-investment attracts success. That's powerful. It seems to me that everyone on this planet who I know or have worked with is suffering from self-hatred and guilt to one degree or another. The more self-hatred and guilt we have, the less our life works. And the less self-hatred and guilt we have, the better our lives work on all levels. The innermost belief for everyone I have worked with is always, I'm not good enough. And we often add to that, and I don't do enough, or I don't deserve. Does this sound like you? often saying or implying or feeling that you are not good enough, but for whom and according to whose standards? If this belief is very strong in you, then how can you possibly have created a loving, joyous, prosperous, healthy life? Somehow your main subconscious belief would always be contradicting it. Somehow you would never quite get it together, or something would always be going wrong somewhere. I find that resentment, criticism, guilt, and fear 
cause more problems than anything else. These four things cause the major problems in our bodies and in our lives. These feelings come from blaming others and not taking responsibility for our own experiences. You see, if we are all responsible for everything in our lives, then there is no one to blame. Whatever is happening out there is only a mirror of our own inner thinking. I'm not condoning other people's poor behavior, but it is our beliefs that attract people who will treat us that way. If you find yourself saying, everyone always does such and such to me, criticizes me, is never there for me, uses me like a doormat, abuses me, then this is your pattern. There is some thought in you that attracts people who exhibit this behavior. When you no longer think that way, they will go elsewhere. You will no longer attract them. On the physical level, resentment long held can eat away at the body and become the disease we call cancer. Criticism as a permanent habit can often lead to arthritis in the body. Guilt always looks for punishment and punishment creates pain. Fear and the tension it produces can create things like baldness, ulcers, and even sore feet. I have found that forgiving and releasing resentment will dissolve even cancer. While this may sound simplistic, I have seen and experienced it working. We can change our attitude toward the past. The past is over and done. We cannot change that now, yet we can change our thoughts about the past. How foolish for us to punish ourselves in the present moment because someone hurt us in the long ago past. That concludes today's episode of 7 Minutes for Yourself. Please take a moment to rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. Today and every day with your kiddo is a gift. Enjoy it. Thanks for tuning in.